You wow. are one pathetic loser. loser. <laughs> wow. uh, yeah. Done. That's all it took? That's all After all this time? Yeah. It's just compounded. Oh, your hand looked it's huge. Compounded. Yeah. Sure. Huge. Were you out of your oh. were you out of your bench, bro? Oh, 200, but focus on squats, mom. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Hurt my ass. You're, You're a squat. A squat. You're a squat. You're such a squat. Hello, everyone. Who decided to show up? Luck who decided to show up? Oh, there he is, first person. What was that? Just Anyone else hear the that? Mic. Oh, okay, that was the mic. I swear, I heard some like other voice coming through my microphone, which would have been really weird. Uh, hello, everybody. Te- Welcome Jesus? to the <laughs> F Word Podcast. Podcast. Uh, for those of you joining Podcast. us on live, what's up? Thank you for joining us on this nice Thursday where we're not going to see a movie. And for everybody else, I hope you're having a great uh, weekend so far. And uh, also now we can now say shout out to everybody on in YouTube because I put our last oh. episode on YouTube. So I'm going to continue putting stuff on YouTube. Oh, wow. I put a little uh, PSA thing together just kind of saying like, hey, we took a big step back from YouTube. So I'm just going to release the episodes as they are right now. Mm-hmm. Just audio. Audio. And um, yeah. That's Excellent. Uh, that's it for now until uh, we figure out uh, if I get a new laptop. My brother got a new one for like 600 bucks oh. uh, and he said it's pretty good. Mm. Now, I'm going to have to take a look and see because there was one I was looking at last year because then I'm thinking, well, we can just record these on a phone like they shoot people shoot like movies, like mini movies on their phones and it looks great. Right. Mm-hmm. So we may not need all the fancy, fancy equipment there. Excellent. The one problem with the phone, though, that I was thinking of this too. Yep. Would this mic be good enough for the video? We're, oh, yes, see, I would need mind. it. I, realize, yeah, this. I would need. Come I, on, man. I have a headache, man. I have no idea how this happened. Like, that's okay. That's great. Okay. I would need the just the the base audio coming from the device, and then I can just cancel it out. Like that's probably the extent of a lot of what's going on. <sighs> Go for it. What is it? Is it good? Yeah. <laughs> so the chat's been going off. Somebody says they have a big booty. Congratulations. All joking aside, says if virginity had a fan club. Okay. Uh, Ace of Spades says, can you guys settle, the, settle a debate for me? At the end of Rogue One, isn't Darth Vader holding the door shut using the Force? So that scene where they're all running and he's Yeah, comes. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Somebody, I, I feel like I, I didn't realize that, but somebody pointed out in my comment section when I posted the scene and I thought it made sense. He's only using one arm when he was doing it. He, it's like he was using one arm to do one thing and yeah. he was wax oning and wax offing that whole entire yeah. hallway. It was amazing. But yeah, I think so. And he destroyed a planet at the same time with his mind. With his mind. It's one that you don't know of. <clears throat> yeah. Well, then is it truly destroyed? Ah. Oh, but she in the woods and no one's there to hear it. Yeah, look at that guy. Well done. Hey, look at that guy. Oh, you should get headaches more often. Yeah, you should. Oh, you should. It makes yeah. you smarter. Actually, I found, I found both of us. Actually, by the way, this is G. Nick's with me and Anthony's with me. Yeah, Nick, um, I don't know if you guys realize he's like the Brock Lesnar of our group. He just shows up uh, once every couple of months to say suplex someone and leaves. Yeah, that's that's basically it. Yet I'm the highest paid one out of everyone. <laughs> Sucker. He gets paid one cent. <laughs> hey, one cent to zero is still one cent. <laughs> I yeah. mean, we get to zero, he gets one. That's, I mean, it's not fair, but okay. Sorry. Um, Sorry. Um, yeah, no, I found. Pays I, a lot. I found early on in life. That when I'm super tired and just not having it, I'm both at my wittiest, cleverest, and funniest. Yeah, agreed. Then when I'm when all my facilities are firing on all cylinders, because then Cause I'm just thinking too much, way too much. Yeah, yeah. zero. Arturo, F's are what's given. up, man? We missed you last week. It was a Friday because I though. wasn't there. That's true. <laughs> well, I, th- I mean, Fridays That's are right, typically Arturo. thanks, man. Fridays are typically harder to get people to come out That's because true. they're already getting ready to do other things on Fridays. Um, like going clubbing. Yes. Do people Fuck. go clubbing anymore? I don't know. Like with Tinder, is there any point to go clubbing? No, because you go straight to the home. Right. But the thing I don't understand, like I don't have Tinder, but I see because like a couple high school kids got it. Like it's a big plague in my high school, and there's a bunch of people now on Tinder who are there to meet friends. Like, don't, if you just want to hook up, don't like swipe on me because I'm just here for friends. It's like, what the hell are you doing on Tinder? Yeah. Well, meeting people. It is a meeting people person. Now, but it's like a dating It's site. a dating app. For sure. But I mean, you know, what's to say that two people that are friends are kind of dating, but not romantically? Isn't that what Facebook is for? <laughs> like, if you want to be friends, isn't that what Facebook no, is? No, you know what's Facebook? Facebook has turned into, and I think I've said this on the show already. When you first turned 19, there was that neighborhood pub. 
Yeah. And you used to always go. For us, it's Bonzini's. Yeah. Right? And we still go there. But now when we go there, it's kind of weird because everything has remained the same and it's kind of sad. Yeah. Where at the time, we thought it was the coolest place ever. But yeah. now it's filled with just like old people, grandparents that are finally going out. Like yeah. My parents go to Bonzini's. Empty nesters. Empty nesters that are going out there. Yeah. And it's essentially the exact same thing. It's just we have changed and they're just staying there the that's whole time. That's a great analogy. That's that's my Facebook yeah. analogy. If I could if I could pick a demographic as to what it would be or an analogy that would, that's the one I t- go to every time. And it's it like, seems to hold some water. It's like TGI water. Fridays if yeah. you're in the states like okay. <laughs> yeah. this, the, sure. the restaurant. Yeah. yeah. Cuz when you first got like of age to drink, yeah. that's the place yeah, you went to. It's great. Everyone went there. Yeah. Growing up, everyone's like we're going to Bonzini's and this yeah. it's this mythical place that you want to go to and it was great when you first went it was awesome uh all the waitresses were young now it's the same waitresses essentially yeah. and they've gotten a lot older and just do not give an f road hammers yeah um so Sorry. yeah that's that's the dealio with that thing not all of them not all of them yeah, yeah. Sure, right. i forget how we got onto that huh? topic by the way what did you say oh like oh headaches <laughs> when we're younger you have a wife i said yeah, oh, I didn't say like your wife. Oh, oh sorry, I, was, I, I was like, what did you say about my wife? I will destroy you. She was talking about clubbing and people meeting each other as friends on Facebook. Yeah. But I think Facebook's also that one thing where people go to like shove their achievements down everyone's throat. Like yes. it, it's it's, well, it's like we're parents clean my room today. To kids. Yeah, exactly. Like, nobody cares. Like Twitter is another one. Twitter and Facebook are the same. The only difference is Twitter has less pictures. They still have pictures, but just less stuff on there. Yeah. Um, And then Facebook is that. Oh, you know, my daughter took two steps, which yeah. having witnessed my friend's parent kids that was take his steps. Posts. No, no I know. This Actually, is, I didn't post that on Facebook. I think Christine she might have, did. didn't she? Oh, she might have. No, but my goddaughter, his daughter, yeah. you know, really close friends of mine that have kids. I never realized that it was actually a big deal because every time I heard it, it was like, oh, they took steps. That's great. You know, everyone can yeah. fucking walk. But I actually witnessed my goddaughter get up, take two steps, fall down on her ass and get back <laughs> up and do it. And yeah. I'm like... Holy shit, it's actually difficult. Yeah. But that's what people use Facebook for. Yeah. I disagree. I feel like Twitter isn't for like bragging. Because I don't see anybody brag on Twitter. I think it's just, uh, it's just more of a news site. Like Twitter is there for me. I use Twitter just like to follow like game companies, like movie companies, just to see like what sure. they're doing like, with updates. Facebook is where parents go to brag about their kids. Sure. Instagram's for memes. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. Twitter is definitely, uh, unfortunately, it's turned into this like weird political, political battleground. <laughs> Too many um, hashtags. Oh, too many hashtags. Not enough tweets. Yeah, like just like for they'll everyone, do like a three or four fa- phrase like tweet, and then there's like a bajillion hashtags after. Well, and you're and like, I'll tell oh. you why. So on our Instagram thing, we've got like I've got the saved hashtags, and I yeah. change them up. And on the caption, there's really nothing there because essentially I just want everybody to see how important I am. Yes, and. You know, lo and behold, I'm not as important as I feel I am. Right. So once I step out of my own echo chamber, it's this echo thing. Chamber. It's this thing that I found online. I was talking to somebody about something pretty intense, and my knowledge of it was more than the other person's. But it was this, there's this actual thing, and they did a Stanford experiment. I told you about it. This mm-hmm. it's called the curse of knowledge. Now. I'm, when I say that, this isn't like Thanos telling to Stark, oh, like you're cursed or burdened by knowledge or whatever, because Einstein actually believed knowledge is a burden. But this, uh, I guess, phenomena, this thing is just simply, you know something and you know it so well that you believe everybody else knows it, hmm. right? So when you talk about things, you believe that the other person knows it just because you know it. Oh, okay. So the experiment at Stanford was taking one group, and they would play a song, but they would tap the song out on their leg. And the other person would have to guess what song that would be, which oh. is already difficult in its own right. But the person tapping it knows the song so well that they even think that each of their digits is making individual notes when it's not. Yeah. But And, and they're so, I guess, cursed would be the word by how much they know about that and the other person doesn't know that they get through super frustrated. I don't know. It's mm. it's really interesting. But that's what the curse of knowledge is and that's kind of where it plays into a lot of these like weird again echo chambers that are on Twitter and Facebook and everything. Because you think people know and people give a shit about and that's where I find myself getting into those little little arguments with people. That's how I'm starting this podcast out. How about it's a you good guys? Good start. It's a good start. How's uh how you feeling? 
I'm better today. You're better today. Are yeah. you sick? Oh, oh yeah. What is up with us being it sick constantly? Not good, man. I, I when I called him and he picked up the phone and he was talking, which usually that's what happens when <laughs> there's a phone call involved. Uh, you sounded like shit. I was like out of it. Well, I'd been throwing up all day. Yeah, yeah. That was on Tuesday, so I'm better now. But yeah, it was not a good sight. Did not go to work. I didn't go to work yesterday either. But you did go today. Today was my first day back, yeah. And what happened when you got back to work today? We talked about this briefly. It was like everybody had to come and talk to me about stuff. Like it was work related, but it was just catching up. And like my first hour of the day was, okay, we need to talk about this. And then they would leave and another person would come in right after. We need to talk about this. Okay. What's wrong with you? You're breathing really heavy. Yeah. Uh, I'm stuffed up. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, what's going on with you? I told you guys, like, I'm sick now. Like, I don't know. This just happens. Yeah. It's like not even a full day thing. It's like literally an hour thing. Like, I just get sick. (laughs) So Darth Vader's Chihuahua is joining us on the show today on the podcast. That's you. That's you. Why wouldn't they make your shirt so like his head is cut off and then it moves up to your neck? Yeah. Well, yeah, well, it's, it's like your head is covering the, weird. the... Also, it got really quiet since I turned that stupid fan that yeah. for some reason the last three weeks I've forgotten to fucking turn, turn off. off. It's Jesus. just weird. That'd be weird. Why would it... Like, look at this man. It's a well, like, it's got the body. What he's saying is like if... if the hair is head, already yeah. cutting into where your neck is, right? Yeah. But it's not giving a defining line. So he's wearing a Dragon Ball Z shirt. Uh, who's the character? Gogeta. So Gogeta's on his t-shirt. Goji. Duh. <laughs> and the blue hair is going up towards the neck area, but it's not showing the completion of it as it is on the sides. So my question is, why isn't his neckline cut off to where the neckline of the shirt is? And then he could be the head. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And then the rest of the body can show up. Unless that is how the hair is like cut. Like it's it is that jagged. And like well, where his no, no, collar it's is, it's showing the jaggedness, but it's stopping at that collar yeah, that's back true. there. Yeah, it doesn't. And yeah. then it's it's just kind of fading into the shirt, it's like soul so decision. So proportionately style. incorrect. Yeah, kind of faded, but you feel you all ask right. For your money back. Yeah, yeah, you should. Yeah, you should suck my balls, Mister Garrison. I'd, wow, I'd rather wow. not. And that's you know what's just, really funny about wow. that? I was thinking about Uncle Fucker today, and I don't have all day to find them. No. No. The song Uncle Fucker from no, South Park. I do know oh, that okay. song. I'm just was, saying about his balls. No, no, no. I know yeah. that. But uh, I, I I was just for some reason thinking about that song completely Check fucking randomly. Face, Uncle Fucker. Fucker. Yeah. You're a boner biting best. Anyways. Uh, and then, yeah, you just said that. That was worth, that so worked out. I posted the like Wheel of Fortune scene from South Park. Okay. Where Randy guesses like the word like people who annoy you and it's like N space G-G-E-R and it's nagger. And he says Jesus. the N word. It's nagger. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I posted that and some guy commenting like, wow, because I wasn't sure how this was going to go over. So I, po- so I posted it. Somebody commented, wow, like you shouldn't have posted this or something. So I waited a bit to see like what other reactions were. Yeah. People started going off on him. So I just waited. I said, whatever. Yeah. And then like 15 comments down, he's like, guys, like I find this clip really funny. Like I think this is a hilarious part of the show. <laughs> people like, well, why would you comment that then? And he deleted the whole comment fre- thread. So you're left on an island by yourself. <laughs> Recently, entertained facts become very racist. I don't know why. Well, I think no, it's. I like think the it's, post the other day with Jordan Peele. Yeah. And all I said, I didn't call him racist. I just said, hey, like he should have phrased this better. It sounds like kind of like dicey. Like if a it's white become guy said racially it. insensitive, or like racially sensitive, I should say, rather than racial or whatever. But well, yeah, I think people are kind of. Yeah. And I'll tell you why, because if it was like you mentioned, if it was a white director saying I'm only going to cast white people, well, then pitchforks would be coming out. Exactly. But the irony and the hypocrisy, of course, is that it's not in that case, which um, we're not going to get into it, but it's the same on both sides. Yeah. Just so everybody knows by definition alone. Yeah. But anyways. Uh, did you get a lot of flack for that though? Like, did you, you get some did people? Get a like, lot of flack, but a lot of people defended you. I yeah. noticed. I was going to say, one. like, for yeah. me, I was looking. I'm like, there's like, nothing guys, wrong with this. It's just a post, and somebody was like, "Or uh, I'm going to unfollow you." And then one other guy was like, "Well, good. Like, who cares if you're going to be like that? Like, yeah, well, that's not what the intent of the post was. Like, yeah. if people who follow your page know you, they know that you're not. You know, and even in my caption, like, all I said was like. Like I get the message. It could have been worded what better. He was saying, trying to say, yes. but he worded I, it really badly. I, I thought the yeah. way you put it out was, was exactly bang on. You had no. Yeah. The, I if I were no you, reason to defend. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Unfortunately, you got to get into that spot. But I mean, Michael B. Jordan a while back says he's I, I'm going after white roles. He said that, and yeah. no one's going to complain about it. And yeah. I'm, I'm like, go for whatever role you want. But if a white want. guy said I'm going after black roles, people <laughs> yeah. would be like, oh, what sure. are you talking about? Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Now. To be fair, there are a lot of white it, roles it, compared to black roles. Well, let's no, no, yeah. no, not just that. If um, if they decided to do a period piece and a white man wanted to play the role of a black person, that's different. Yeah, like if you're in like 
the 1700s, 1800s or whatever, and you're saying, I'm going to do a period piece and I'm a white person doing and I want to be a black role. I'm sorry, my dude. No, yeah. You can't do it. <laughs> yeah. However, on the other side of that, if you go even further back to the 15th century, then you can kind of intermingle them because I've read a lot. Of, I've read quite a bit about the Renaissance, especially since the our uh, our honeymoon and stuff. And there's a lot of pretty messed up shit and not even racial, just class. A lot of it was just class based yeah. and it was pretty brutal. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think he might have he, the phrasing for sure. But I also think like, yeah, why would you, though? Like, why would you cast a demographic that you don't know very well? That like yeah. I'm not saying that only let's say female directors direct female actors and so on and so forth because in the past we've known it to be not the case. Yep. But I mean, if you if you can really give us a fleshed out character, that means you know what, how that character would think and act. Because yeah. as an audience, we've kind of gotten smarter and we can tell what's really fake and what's forced. Like the Ghostbusters, the new Ghostbusters thing, right? It was a a white dude. Let's say if you want to play that, it was just a guy directing for really funny we females mm -hmm. right so the question is what if a female was in charge of it what if a black female was in charge of it what is what if a black male was in charge like what kind of movie would they have gotten out of it because clearly that one didn't work yeah so i don't know it's it's an interesting topic Indeed. it's a heavy topic i feel like people like I already knew what Jordan Peele was doing like it wasn't a surprise with the ghetto and us like it sure. wasn't like oh like he's casting black people like it's such a surprise but I feel like you didn't have to go out and say it. Like, yeah. Well, I, you know what the thing is, though? Um, I guess if you were to say, um, actually, Nick, what do you think about that? I think he's, he said it on purpose to an, to elicit a reaction and he got what he wanted out of it. Like he, he, he did what he f knew was going to cause a reaction. Yeah. What I, what I hate is when people just feel like they need to go onto Instagram, make a comment and basically make themselves feel better and make themselves feel like, you know, no, I'm not racist and I'm going to prove it because I'm going to cut down this post, even though yeah. it's not racial in any way, shape or form. But just to be safe, I'm going to say that it, it bothers me and it like it's discriminatory. Go fuck yourself. It's it, not it, it's called virtue signaling. Yeah. People yeah. virtue signal to try to make yeah. themselves like the Gillette commercial. Yeah. Like they, they use the Gillette commercial to sell products, yeah. which ironically enough, a, a, an ad about toxic masculinity on a, in a, from a brand that historically charges three dollars more for female products. Yeah. Is kind of a funny thing. To, yeah. Like, hypocritical. Really think, it's a very hypocritical thing. Yeah. But they just found something they can cash on. And that, that same on Instagram, people will do that. Yeah. They'll try to stand behind something and, you and know, try feel to good about it. themselves for the day. For me, the way I see it, as long as he makes good movies, I don't give a flying fuck. Who yeah, he exactly. Cast. He can grab a cat and a dog fucking in an alley. And as long as it's a good and compelling story with rich characters, fucking go for it. Lady I don't and care. the Tramp. Lady and the Tramp. Thank you. Just, just trying to Those spaghetti. He, he is working on Twilight Zone, though. That's going to be pretty cool. He's yeah. going to be doing his Twilight Zone stuff. Um, What do we got going oh, on? Once Upon a Hollywood. Let's, yeah. Okay. I screwed up big time. And this is what makes me sound like a, a fucking idiot because one of my most anticipated movies came out with a trailer last week and we didn't talk about it. And that's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh. Quentin Tarantino's ninth movie. And he says that on the 10th movie, he's retiring. Hmm. He considered Kill Bill a one-parter, like a one movie. One movie. Which I agree. I actually recently yeah. watched it. It's It holds up pretty good. I think it gets a little too full of itself in some sections. But anyways, did you guys see the trailer? No. Yes. What did you think of the <laughs> no. trailer? Well, I didn't know what it was. Like, I just know, like, you want to talk about it. So it's just, like, fine, I'll watch this. Thank you. I had, like, no idea what I was going into. Like, I, it's about a stuntman and a, like, famous actor. So... I thought it was actually pretty interesting because it's not a movie that I actually like go and like want to watch. Like from what I've seen, it's just like one of those movies where I just really wouldn't care to see. But I'm interested by it. Like it looks pretty, like just interesting and funny. Like they have a lot of like good cast. They have mm. uh, Johnny Depp, Margot Robbie. I forgot the other guy's name. Was it Chris Pine? Kind of looked like Chris Pine. Uh, I'm gonna try to the find the stunt man. I'm gonna try to find. Him. But no, I just looked. I don't know. Like that's all I can really say is it was a teaser trailer. It looked interesting. <laughs> I'd be willing to give it a chance with one more trailer and see if I'd like go and see it. But. Luke Perry's in it. Dakota Fanning, Al Pacino. Luke Perry's the guy who died, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Tim Roth, obviously. Uh, Michael Madsen, of course. Timothy Oliphant, Kurt Russell, James oh, wow. Marsden, uh, Keith Jefferson. Is it Johnny Lena Depp? Dunham, That's not his name. Uh, Maya Hawk, <laughs> Austin Butler, Mike Moe, 
who I believe is the guy that's playing uh, Bruce Lee. Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't know why yeah. it's Johnny Depp. <laughs> no, <Leonardo laughs> not DiCaprio even close. Sure. <laughs> yeah, he's got. Uh, he's Told got you, I'm really. Long. But that's more than long. I knew because I, I was like, oh, Johnny Depp's <laughs> this one. <laughs> yeah, he's got a lot of people in this. Uh, so essentially, it's an actor and a stuntman navigating through a changing industry. So I think that's why it's called Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because it's these guys going from being top of their game to then having to transition into new styles of film, new mediums, new characters, new new everything, right? Yeah. Um I and as Barney Stinson says, new is always better. better. New is always yeah. better. There's uh, a new grape scotch. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, Anthony. You have a new form of hepatitis. <laughs> well, new is always better. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like the trailer though? Like overall? I thought, yeah, like I I like said, I didn't think I'd actually like want to go see this movie just cuz I don't know. It just didn't seem like it'd be my kind of thing before I saw it, but I'd be interested to give it a shot. How are you with Tarantino films overall? I can't say I've seen a single one. <laughs> you haven't seen anything? Well, maybe. Maybe I have. I just don't know. Okay. On Netflix right now. Pulp Fiction. I want to watch Pulp Fiction. I just never got around to it. Of course you have yeah. to. Um, Reservoir Dogs is on there. Okay. Is Dust Till Dawn? Is that a Tarantino one? He's He was, a, he was, a he was co- in it. Uh, he was in it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with uh, Clooney. Yeah. Um, Pulp Fiction's on it, so you'd start with Reservoir Dogs. Actually- True Romance would be the first one, but uh, not True Romance. The fuck is that romance one? Fake Romance. No, 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 no. Fake Bad Taxi. Romance. No, 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 no. You smiled. You know what that is? You're nasty. <laughs> you know what that is? You're <laughs> Fake Taxi. Like, everybody knows what that is. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's like asking what Brazzers yeah. is. Come yeah, on, man. Exactly. Uh, Blake it's like saying, do you know who Stormy Daniels is? Like, yeah, of course, exactly. you know. Exactly. She makes headlines. And now yeah. even on the political spectrum. Well, exactly. Not, um, but not. come on. You knew who she was before. Pun I intended. Know who it was. What was I gonna Don't s- even. Hold on, hold on. What was I going to say? So you can go <laughs> you on there. She was before. Pun intended. How's that a pun? <laughs> you knew who she was before. All right. Hold on. Okay. Uh, get it. <laughs> true Romance is the one. Yeah, sorry. I was saying True Lies that I was screwing up. Oh, that's with, uh, what's her name? Jamie Lee Curtis. And Arnold, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, true Romance is one of his first ones, but he ended up not directing that one. He sold the script, but he wrote it. So it still could be technically him. Uh, four Rooms is actually a really interesting one. I recommend people doing it. It's four directors that it's one movie, four directors, and it's in a hotel with four different rooms, and each director directed a different room, and it's one movie. It's pretty cool. Hmm. Um, Natural is, Born uh, Killers is another one. I oh, think yeah. Maybe that was the Harrelson. one. Woody yep. Harrelson. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, hold on. So you're going to go. Is pa- Tommy Wiseau one of the directors for four rooms? No. Is that the fifth room, though? Like in no. the canon? No. No. Reservoir Dogs, you're going to start with, then you're going to go Pulp Fiction. And then from Pulp Fiction, I'd highly recommend Jackie Brown because a lot of people don't mention Jackie Brown, Jackie and I think Brown. it's wonderful. Then you're going to go Pablo kill. Pablo is Jackie Brown. Jackie Brown. Sorry. I just okay. remember the preview when it came out. Uh, then you're going to go Holy kill back, Bill. Blow myself. Blow my nose. Jesus. Well, <laughs> this is for you. Kill Bill 1 and 2, then you go Inglorious Bastards, then Django, and if you want The Hateful Eight, but The Hateful Eight is really, I don't uh, know. Netflix original? No. Okay. Nice haircut, Anthony. Well, somebody <laughs> said nice haircut. I said thank you when you're talking. Oh, okay. No, you didn't. Anyways, um, I'll talk <laughs> about the trailer. I thought it was awesome. I thought it lo- it looks really good. It looks like um, how La La Land was a love letter to Hollywood. This is more going to be like a middle finger to Hollywood in a way. Um Tarantino's one of my guys. Mm-hmm. Controversy and all. Uh, hello. And uh, yeah, the guy they cast as Bruce Lee, though. Holy shit, man. Oh? He looks great. Really? Like, the way he was just moving in that trailer, the way he was talking, just there's this essence coming out of him. I'm like, this is <laughs> Bruce Lee, man. I just, man, that he's walking back. He's like, with his hands, like the yeah. creeper hands. Yeah. No, Roger. <laughs> Why did you, did you just not wash American your hands? Dad. No, American Dad. Was, oh, okay. Yeah. That's a between you guys. Yeah. Anyways, I would highly recommend those ones. And outside of Kill Bill Volume 2, Jackie Brown, and I believe. No, I think that's it. You'll find all of them on Netflix right now. And uh-huh. I have them. So. Netflix. But yeah, it, he's he's one of those guys where you either like his style or you don't. But there is a movie for everybody because people that don't like Pulp Fiction, for instance, like Kill Bill. Yeah. If you don't like Kill Bill, there's Reservoir Dogs. If you don't like Reservoir Dogs, there's uh, Jackie, Inglor- Brown. Jackie Brown. It, there's Inglorious Bastards. There's Django. There's like there. Yeah. He's got such a wide array of stuff. It's it's pretty awesome. What did he say? Blake said, "I tried G. Ha ha ha. I am Bruce Lee." Oh, he, saying he looked really good in the movie. I get it. No, yeah. I get it. Yeah. Okay. Cool, man. It's going back to what you said about two minutes ago. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know, I know. Uh, it's but, when you said that Bruce Lee looked really good. Yeah, I, know, I get it. Anyway. Good job, Blake. 
Thanks. Nice joke, Blake. Thank you. Thanks, Blocky. So, like, no, <laughs> Blocky. Blocky. Uh, yeah, no, it looks good. I'm super excited Jake about Quillen. it. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm super excited. About it. I've been fucking getting these emails all goddamn week. What are those? They're in, it says in web Amazon dot s5 invitation a hundred dollars like yeah i'm gonna yeah. click on that you click on it yeah sure do it um i clicked on one from uh prince in nigeria nigeria thank how you how did you, you know about that that's a basic like oh thing. my god that's crazy so it wasn't legit no, i shouldn't legit. have clicked on it well because i sent him the three hundred dollars so that i could possibly get the 30 million Oh yeah, yeah. That's a good it's return. A small I thought so. Right? As Trump would say this has been the best trade deals in the history of trade deals. <laughs> Actually, one of the greatest ever. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's all I had on once upon a time. Totally blank. Thank you for knowing where I was going with. That. I remember. I like. I don't remember. I did this recently for my English class. I did like the skit where like Trump goes to Canada or whatever because it's like something about like Canada. Has he been here already? Oh yeah, but it's like mm-hmm. some skit for whatever like Canadian term we had to use. Mm-hmm. And my teacher is very like liberal, right? So she was like worried about how I was going to portray like Trump and Trudeau because that was both in it. And apparently, well, I <laughs> you call- played both. No, someone oh, else okay. played Trudeau. Like it was this trade deal for it to trade Montana. Oh, okay. So what happened was like apparently my I did a really good impersonation. I guess she said she really liked it of like, Trump. Yeah, I was like, oh, you know, this is gonna be huge. Like, I gotta go to the bathroom, and trust me, it's gonna be huge. <laughs> you you hyperbolize the shit out of your thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and you made it a little dirty. No, I did. It was so inappropriate. <laughs> Isn't it almost always though? Yeah, like I'm can- in a group chat with like a bunch of people on Instagram, right? And they call me and this other Canadian snow Mexicans. So I just have to throw it out. I just have to throw that Jesus. into it. I've heard that term before. I've never heard yeah, that before. I've heard that term. So I threw that into the video too. I'm like, oh, you know, snow Mexico is very nice. And then she was like, you know what? That was a really bad joke. But I laughed. I felt really bad afterwards. Hey, if you laugh, you're complicit. Yeah. You're so I'm like, oh, so you liked it. Yeah. The second I 94 someone, on it. The nice. second someone laughs, you like that's it. Yeah. Like they're all all their credibility goes out like yeah. against you goes out the window. Like you laughed. Yeah. That's it. That's you can't it. say you were offended. No, exactly. After you laughed, yeah. I'm sorry. That's the thing with comedy. Yeah. It's like you're either in it all like all the way. You can't pick and choose yeah. comedy and you can't dictate what comedy is based on what you think. Um true statement. True story. True, true statement. Story. That's an interesting fact. Mm, it's an interesting fact. You're funny, big facts. <laughs> you, uh, what was it again? Big F's? Um it was big F's, wasn't it? Maybe big F. Big F's. Big F. Big F. Go Maybe. big F yourself, Blake. Yeah. <laughs> big Wow. Frape. Big Frape. Big Frape. Big Frape. Yeah. Big Frape. Drink grape. Grape. <laughs> drink so we got a topic already yeah <laughs> look, look at the Shit. time like half well you know oh. what the fact that we got a half an hour in on absolute bs except for once upon a time and uh, the jordan peele, peele thing um but anyways yeah i'm excited for that movie i'm always gonna Every be time I'm that a thing Tar- goes off oh shit. yeah <laughs> i'm a tarantino dude yeah. uh here's a question for you guys unless you have something no I'll, after okay okay i'm gonna put a little scenario for you it's pronounced scenario scenario um, Steven Spielberg Hello. yes, does not like Netflix and oh, yeah. does not like the fact that Netflix movies get nominated for Oscars. There are rumors now. I don't know how strong this is, but he's petitioned against them. He's been very vocal about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, some, he's against streaming stuff. And apparently there was a petition again uh, from him behind the scenes. Again, these are just rumors that he was telling people not to vote for Roma because it was a Netflix movie. Mm. Which I think of as a suppression of art. Um, I don't think it really matters where you're at if you are, are on those theaters for the two and a half weeks on the five screens as the Academy dictates you can be to get nominated. That's an investment on your part. Mm-hmm. And anything should get nominated if it's for consideration. And this past week, he's, I think, signed a deal with Apple Streaming. And so he ended up going to the Apple streaming thing because they're going to be doing movies and TV shows and stuff, I mm-hmm. think, and being like the main guy there. Now, the topic of those movies mm-hmm. coming up as Oscars and stuff, that never came up. So he's okay with that? <laughs> well, and, and we that's, don't know. that's where I'm not. So already, let's say, take out the fact that he hasn't said anything about Apple streaming movies that mm-hmm. he's now a part of. Yeah. Are you, does it already sound extremely hypocritical? Yes. Absolutely. You're a yes. You're a yes. Absolutely. For me, I think if uh, if the conversation came up about a movie going on Apple that he's doing, which I'm assuming he's doing to get Oscar consideration, mm-hmm. um, if he starts going on that, well, Apple streaming's okay, but Netflix isn't. 
I think that fully goes across. I'm about 70% that he's a hypocrite, but he hasn't made statements against Apple, which he won't. And that's the funny thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think he will because now he's their golden boy. He's the guy that's leading the charge. I like for me, I think it boils down to like the evolution of movies in general and, and the industry. So that's like saying, you know, if you have a CGI movie, then it shouldn't count as, um, you know, towards an Oscar nomination because it's not real. It's not like, you know, it's all computer generated. So that shouldn't count as, as something that's eligible for the Oscars either. Sure. Like the, the problem is not the problem. The thing is, is that the, the movie industry has evolved and as, as such, he should too, right? Like, I mean, so if somebody comes with a good movie, in the end, a good story, a good plot, good characters, which is the definition of a movie. It's a great movie. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah, like it doesn't matter what the what the format or the you know the what I don't know what the word I'm looking for, like the stage that it's sure. done on is, yeah, yeah. as long as it's a good story with good characters and a good plot, like that. That's all that really matters. Anthony, I feel like I just like it's one of those things where if somebody like I forgot who what it was, but they were bashing superhero films, saying like. You know, they should stop making these movies. But if, you know, Marvel came and said, said, hey, do you want to film a movie? Like, of course, I'm going to jump on the opportunity to do it. Like, Netflix yeah. is pretty much destroying the game right now. Like, they're climbing the ladder for people. Like, people spend all the time binging. Nobody watches cable anymore. Like, nobody actually watches TV. Like, mm. you know, many people are canceling cable to go to streaming services. I haven't had cable in uh, over a, almost a year now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I never watch cable. Like, I don't, I can't remember the last time I watched cable. I, yeah. I genuinely cannot tell you. Do you watch yeah. sports? No. Me neither. That's why I do. Uh, it doesn't matter That's to when me. when I watch it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I know a lot of people that are on that. They're like, well, if it wasn't for the sports channels, I wouldn't need cable either. Yeah. I just feel that he is a hypocrite. And if he does make a movie and uh, an Oscar opportunity does come, he's not going to say, oh, no, like, I don't want this because yeah. it's not in theaters. I just think he he's in a position right now where he could say now that he's a part of this Apple streaming thing that, you know what? My comments might have been a little bit harsh. I am a purist or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, but. You know, he can retract his statement and be like, you know what? I was kind of on the wrong side of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- my issue with that, with with him in particular, if I'm a young and up and coming director and I'm going to a studio and I need money, most of the and Steven Spielberg's at that studio making a movie. Where's all the money going to go? Yeah, it's gonna to go Steven to him. Spielberg. Yeah, absolutely. So, I get that Steven Spielberg, the, the the story behind him is that he faked his way in. He made he found himself an office and parked himself <clears throat> there and pretty much got himself in by doing that. Those days are done now. I mean, people become famous on YouTube, right. on all sorts of platforms. But if I'm a young up and coming person and I want to go through the studio system, it's much harder. The studios are less likely to give away money. If Netflix is willing to fund my movie and allow me to be an artist, and work on it the way that I want to work on it without their interference, which historically now they haven't been interfering much with stuff. Mm-hmm. Why is a guy like Steven Spielberg, who, yeah, he's a legend for sure, but why am I going to take the chance to lose out and not make the movie that I want because he's going to outbid me every single time and a bunch of other directors Yeah, when I can just go over here and they're willing to do it for and me. And there'll still be millions of people watching it. Tons, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and and I don't know if it's because his latest movies have been doing very well or or what, but I don't know. I, I'm when I'm he, pretty sure that I'm on the hypocritical side. I'm just waiting to see what comments he's going to make because he's on this Apple thing because no one asked him and he never brought it up since. When he made the comp like so, when he made the comment about the uh, streaming or whatever, is he gonna is he gonna make a movie, put it out in theaters, and then it gets streamed on Apple, like similar to how some Netflix movies do it? Or is it just going to be something that's going to go straight to straight, straight. to streaming? Yeah. I think straight. It is. So Christopher Nolan has the that, same that's issue. That's where I'm. I'm curious to see if that's what like because there is one thing to say like if he's if he's still gonna if he's gonna back up his statement and he's gonna say I'm still gonna produce movies I'm gonna put it out in theaters and then it'll go instead of to a Netflix it'll yep. go to uh, like you know Apple or whatever. Yep. Okay, that's one thing. But if it's gonna go straight to streaming, then you're you're no better than the other director per se and that's bullshit like you can't just go and make statements like that well and that's the interesting thing because chris nolan had a similar issue he preferred amazon over netflix because amazon releases their stuff in theaters first mm-hmm. and then it goes um it, it does its run in the theaters and then it goes on its streaming right yeah so which is really weird because if the movie's going for oscar consideration what's the difference now 
from the other side of things, I can understand that, well, they're taking a chance and gambling it in the theaters anyways, but they do have the safety net of Amazon, whereas Netflix, it parks itself on your TV. Mm -hmm. It's very convenient. And right now, more often than not, people will give that Netflix movie a chance as opposed to getting up and spending money to go to the theater. So where the funds are going to Netflix, very few people are actually getting up and going to the theater because it's A, it's so damn expensive. B, yeah. it's, it's not as convenient. Yeah. And I can maybe see where that's coming from. But again, I don't know the minutia of this Apple deal. I, I just don't like when somebody becomes successful and the arrogance that goes behind it. Like Steven Spielberg, granted, the guy's a genius. He's, yep. he's a great director. I'm not going to say, but rather than take on a role of saying, you know what, let me let me help mentor some people. Let me get involved and help young directors because, you know, in fairness, like a lot of what he had, what he's accomplished, a lot of it was luck too. like, you know, well, it, he, was, it, he was lucky that the shark didn't work in Jaws. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been the same. movie. Exactly. So, I mean, like a guy for a guy like that to just all of a sudden forget what he came from and realize, hey, you know what? I got lucky. And to have that arrogance again, and that's something you and I have discussed, like the true testament of a man when there's is when they're successful and how they act when they are successful. Yep. You could do one of two things. You could like shun everybody else and like push everybody down and make sure they don't get to the level you are, or you take them under your wing and you help them come to the level you are and, and find a value in that. Like there's three things that, that motivate a person, uh, money and name are a difference. Right. Mm -hmm. And at some point it just, it, when you're younger, it's to make money. Eventually, once you make enough money, it's to make a name. And then eventually after that, it's to make a difference. Right. So what I don't understand is why a guy like Steven Spielberg, who's already made money, already made a name and has an opportunity to make a difference, doesn't take that opportunity and instead just decides to focus on himself and shun everybody else. Well, I'll give him this. He has, um, he has mentored some people like JJ Abrams has been kind of under his wing for a while. Fair. He gets a lot of producing credits, but a producing credit to Steven Spielberg is sitting down, like having a phone call. Yeah. Hey, Steven, I'm thinking of putting this guy on the left and putting him in red. No, put him on the right and in blue producer credit yeah. right there. Right. Um, but I, I definitely see where you're coming from because it all boils down to the fact of why are you trying to silence people that are trying to get their projects right. out? Cause everyone's just trying to make a living and, the other big thing is that he holds a lot of sway in the industry mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people hang on his every word. Yeah. And rightfully so. He's earned that name and that re and that Nothing legacy against too. that. Yeah. yeah. But, but again, in the end, you're going to be known as the grumpy old man director who like especially stuck now, in his ways. Yeah. yeah. And especially like, now for people that never grew up with Jaws, that mm -hmm. never that don't give a shit about everything that he's done, because really, what's the latest Spielberg movie that really Ready matters? That's what people will think. Mm -hmm. For me, it's Indiana Jones, it's Jaws, yeah. and it's, um, the fuck's the other one? E.T. Yeah. Jurassic Park, of course. Yeah. You know, those movies. But I grew up with those movies. So for me, Steven Spielberg fucking brought me a motherfucking T-Rex yeah. on screen, <laughs> yeah. and it was unbelievable. Yeah. You know, he scared the shit out of and me the in water Jaws. Glass. Oh, yeah. everything, right? Yeah. But it was done with a guitar, by the way. Yeah. That's, That's how awesome. they got that. That's cool. So they put the glass on a on a guitar and they strum the strings. That's and the smart. reverberation is what caused that to do the ripple ripple effect. That's smart. What's the comment saying? Anything sorry. about this or yeah. just whatever? Uh, just no, don't Blake say sorry. Blake said, awesome. yeah, hustle till your haters ask if you're hiring, which is in his bio, and I make fun of him for it uh, <laughs> a lot. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. But one thing I want to add is when sorry, I think Sorry, what's our Saturo saying? Sorry. Oh, he just said he's going rock climbing and he left. Oh, oh. <laughs> all right, man. Have a good one, dude. Don't hurt he's yourself, long please. He's long gone. Yeah. Long gone. He'll watch it after. Yeah. He'll listen to it. I, I Can you download stuff from YouTube? No. Well, it's a pain in the ass to do it. Is it? Okay. I got to find a way. I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it on SoundCloud or something. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. So when I think of people like kind of giving back, I think of like people. I don't I say like too much. I don't know why. I've noticed. So do I. I've, I've tried to stop yeah. saying it, but I say it a lot too. So I've, I've noticed people. I have to say like, like The Rock and like John Cena where like. If you say as it's the same thing, it's just a yeah. simile. Yeah. Where uh, John Cena, <laughs> he will help wrestlers get over with the crowd it'll help them with tips it'll help them like become that person like in the page movie we saw the rock giving tips to Paige and her brother and that's something i noticed the rock does a lot he'll always give back to his community like when he sees his fans he won't kind of like snub them like tell them to get lost like i saw a video of him giving a pre-game pep talk to some baseball players before the game like, yeah on the, like he was driving his truck and he did that yeah so when i think of like people 
who are like that and who like definitely came from like nothing mm-hmm. and are really grateful. I think of people like The Rock and John Cena, like top of the list. Mm-hmm. Just specifically like wrestlers? Because I well, look at I guys like Jim Carrey, for instance. For me, that's who I know because I know John Cena was living in his car and now he lives in a mansion and he's really yeah. respectful. He yeah. helps people out a lot. And The Rock is just somebody I follow and am motivated by because of his, you know, he's a beast in the gym. So, so yeah. he needs guys like Stallone um, only because... He sold everything. Like he sold his dog, for mm-hmm. instance, or which one were one of the things he made his he made his career with that Rocky script, right? Yeah. Um, and not just actors. There's other people. The Rags to Riches story is you know. Keanu one of Reeves best. is another one who's actually yeah, and yeah. he's just a down to earth good person. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of guys who do stuff quietly and don't take the like you know they don't shout it at the rooftops. Which like a guy like Keanu Reeves, like the guy made millions, like you mm-hmm. know, with the Matrix series and mm-hmm. and uh, just in movies in general. Like he was the highest paid actor forever, and the guy takes the subway wherever he goes. He doesn't take a private car. He doesn't, you know, like it, you're right. But I, I think in in the instance like where you said with with The Rock, I mean, even he's reminded of his beginnings. Like that's why he's got seven bucks production, right? Like that was how much money he had left in his pocket. So, I mean, I think, you know, reminding yourself of, of your, of your beginnings and, you know, being a, true to that like yeah i think that's what and that's why people love him he's incredibly respected and loved and charismatic he'll probably run for president and he'll probably win which is kind of funny yeah. but I don't, see, I don't see him i mean i don't see him winning i see him running but i yeah. don't see him winning really no nah, i don't oh, not even I think, I think it's gonna be um it depends if how close the race is i think right now um if you're Again, not to get into yeah. political thing. If there's a lot of people going against it, yeah. against him, then fine. If it was, it's a one-on-one race, then obviously you give him the fifty percent chance of doing it. But yeah, I, I don't think the majority of the public will. I mean, hell, they thought it was a joke that the other guy that Trump ran. Mm. Yeah. And aside from the tariffs, apparently he's it's, the government's actually doing not bad, like economically speaking. There, well, if they if he just dropped the whole wall thing. Yeah, he's really you know I, I and like I, I part of me like I don't agree with the wall. I'm not saying, but. Part of me like likes the fact that he's like, no, I promised this and I want to fulfill my promise. That's the only part that I like like about what he's doing yeah. is like, you know, you know, he wants to fulfill his promise. I don't like the idea of the wall. I think it's stupid and I don't think it's right. But I just like the fact that he's like, no, but I promised it yeah. and I want to keep my word. But like how he's going about it all is totally <laughs> wrong. But yeah, I just. You know, there was actually something interesting. If you go to Freakonomics Radio from uh, Stephen Dubner does it, who is a co-author on Freakonomics. Yeah. He had Gary Cohen on there, who was um, part of his like crew, like part of Trump's treasury yeah. or something like that. And he was also going to be a, he was almost going to be the president of Goldman Sachs at one point. Oh, but that's a really interesting one because he talks Sachs, about yeah. yeah Goldman Sachs, and he was just talking about kind of the inner workings and how things work and how he was every single day tooth and nail. Showing them all the facts on everything, let's say against tariffs and stuff, and it was it was just really interesting. But anyways, I digress. Yeah, I think Steven Spielberg could do better with, especially if he didn't do the Apple thing. Then who cares? He's somebody that has his opinion on what he feels is cinema and what's not, what's movie and what's film. Even yeah, though they're the same fucking thing. Um, I just yeah, he's he's really he's like a he's a he's a borderline hypocrite i'm just curious to see what's going to happen when yeah he what happens now yeah because again he has the opportunity to retract his statements mm-hmm. um and if he tries he to fucking do his thing with apple and submit it to the oscars well sorry dude you're you're in hypocrite status you know what yeah. i mean uh, and just because you came up in the studio system and had you make your bones through there doesn't mean everybody has to and, I, and that's the mistake I make too a lot. It's like because it was hard for me, it has to be hard for everybody else. Like, yeah, I get caught up in that mm-hmm. all the time. I mean, with you guys too, like with a lot of like the youth and stuff. I'm like, it wasn't this easy. I had to do this and this and this. It's like, well, why do I have to? Like, did yeah. you? Like, I keep thinking to myself, I'm like, I didn't enjoy doing any of that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just well, one thing I bitter. do too, like with self promoters, the reason I give them such a hard time is because I never did it. But if people come to me in DMs and ask me like for tips to grow. Yeah, I won't tell them to go screw themselves. Like I'll give them the tips. I'll give them like apps to use. I'll give them the hashtag sure. advice. Yeah. yeah. But if you go on my page and try and leech it off, that's when I was like, start like, no, that's not. Okay. Yeah, that's a different story. Well, I mean, one of the guys that um like I respect as a reviewer, the casual movie goer and stuff. He, I took some of his stuff and like he he sent them to me, and I worked on some of his audio just to kind of clean it up and stuff, and just a very basic. And he's yeah. been able to take that basic stuff that I kind of did, and it was like, yeah, here you go, man. Like I'm not gonna go to him and be like. Hey, remember when I did this? Like, yeah, 
it doesn't matter because he's doing really well. He's very good at what he does. Mm -hmm. He's crushing it right now and he's almost at 5,000 followers. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, we have a a really mediocre operation here, Mm -hmm. a really rinky dink operation. So for if anybody asks me for any type of help, like I kind of feel off. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, you want it from me? Like we're fucking not even anywhere. Yeah. Right. That's and that happened today too. Uh, one of these kids in my cap class, you know, I'm like Noah, mm. like the guy, the neighbor. Yeah. He came up to me and said, Hey, like, would you, per- would you train me in the gym? I'm like, Oh shit. Like I've made it now. Like yeah. apparently one of the football players like recommended him, like recommended me to him if he wants to like getting big. I'm like, okay, I just come down to the gym like sometime next week and I'll help you like out. Yeah. I'm like, damn, felt good. I made it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, again, it's, it's kind of, you get to that point where like, in anything you do where you you're starting from the bottom and then you get to that point where people are asking you make a name for, for yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and sometimes it's just it's on a smaller scale. Like most of the names that I've made for myself, smaller scale, like the gym when I was younger. Same same mm-hmm. thing with you and in other stuff. Right. Where at first you start off. But I, it is that thing where you mentioned where what you do with your power. Yeah. And that's where heroes and villains come in. Yeah. Because you can have, I don't know, a Spider-Man. Um, you shit yourself. Yeah. That sounds yeah. like you farted. Uh, you can have Spider-Man, two different Spider-Men, one that's a good Peter Parker and the other one that's an evil one. Same exact powers and they just use it differently and one causes destruction and the other one doesn't, right? So, yeah, I don't know. I think Spielberg will – I'm hoping he retracts his statement. I think yeah. it's kind of whatever. I agree. What else we got on the docket? Nothing. But I, before we went on Spielberg, April Fool's is coming up soon. True. I always do something for my Monday. page. I that had an idea day. for my page, but I, if I did it, I would lose so many followers. Don't do but it. I really want to do it, but I'm not going to do it. Okay. I was going to change my name to How I Met Your Mother Facts. <laughs> <laughs> just post. Oh, I don't think anybody would. That wouldn't be a big no, deal. No, that wouldn't have been a big deal. You no, know you do. You should have. You should just. I mean, if you can control it, is you just start like getting people to work for you for free and just have Hi, I Met Your Mother Facts, Friends Facts, Office Facts, all these facts, <laughs> and just create this little empire of facts. facts just specific to a show or something. Yeah. I thought about doing it, but it's so hard. Like even with how much your mother facts, like, I've reached the bottom of the barrel. There's like it's hard yeah, to man. find so many. Yeah. yeah, man, for sure. Cause then eventually you're just like kind of retreading I'm and scheming, everything. I'll do same. something for endgame, I think. I'll like say, Oh, a new trailer came out and just be yeah. a loading video. Did you guys see those new posters? Yeah, I did. Like the characters who lived and died. Yeah, so yeah they're, they're, I saw it. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. Shuri's been confirmed dead since the first trailer. Like, what is everybody on about? Like, oh my god, Shuri's dead? It showed it in the <laughs> trailer. Like, what are you smoking? Well, yeah. You missed that? <laughs> Actually, to that point. It showed Shuri, but it also showed Peter. So I think those were the missing, not necessarily dead, but I could be wrong because it showed Peter. That's that's how yeah. I took it. But I'm glad Valkyrie's alive. <laughs> I mean, they said that already, like half the ship got away and stuff. So that well, was pretty cool. I think it's uh, I'm liking what they're doing. And apparently I saw Chris Evans said uh, he's seen the movie, I guess, three times or something. And he said he's surprised how they've been able to market it and not spoil anything. And he's gotten choked up and teary eyed and stuff. Robert Downey Jr. said something actually that'd be that's like mad props for Chris Evans. He's like something about like the heart of the MCU, which we're like, you're the heart of it. Like you're the you're yeah. you're the guy, right? Um, hmm. But the way they've done Cap has been great. And yeah, I mean, I get that he can get choked up, but he's also in it. Yeah. It's different when you're in it because yeah. you kind of. Get him, it's like looking back on your like sports season at the very end. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Where everyone else is like, that's cool. Like, oh, whatever. It's over. Yeah. It's, it's a decade of your life or whatever that you've put into it. Dude, right? for sure. And I think he was going to quit acting, too, because he did mm-hmm. not another teen movie than the Fantastic Four. And at that point, he's like, I don't I really want to do this. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do this acting thing. And then all of a sudden he had his like they're, they all are now legends in oh, shit. mega stars, mega stars. And. There, it's because of this cinematic universe, and yeah. obviously the people behind them. Because without them, it wouldn't happen. Um, I still don't get why everyone's fucking talking about the three-hour runtime. Like it's a like that's new. Yeah, were they talking about an intermission or something? I, I heard. Oh God, have an intermission! I will piss my pants. I my bladder inter- cannot last that long. Yeah, I drink too much fucking water. Yeah, it's too just much. Don't you drink gotta that pace day. yourself. What you got to do is just drink a lot of coffee that day. You will not piss for a day and a half if you drink coffee. Really? I have the opposite problem. Oh, dude. If I drink water, then yeah. yes, for sure. Yeah. If I drink coffee all day, it won't, it won't even affect me. It's almost like oh. everything gets clogged. Oh. Which is gross. I'm sorry for that. Also, yeah. if we can't go to a premiere like two weeks early, <laughs> you know, you've had too much when it smells like getting a light shut roast. down until I see that fucking movie. I'm disabling the account. <laughs> That's probably smart. Yeah. Because I don't give a shit. I'm going to see it. We're, gonna, we're going for Monday after Easter. That's what we're aiming for. Yes. 
Oh, Monday is that what we're Easter. doing? Vasily's we'll bitching about Greek dance. I don't give a shit. I'm I, skipping that. I yeah. told him I'm not going. <laughs> like I told him straight up, I'm not going. And Monday would be a good one, good like time to go. Yeah, there's there's no chance. I don't give a shit about uh, teaching kids how to dance. Is there not point. like a Thursday midnight show? But would we, no, because I won't. No, we could probably but do it at midnight. Do- midnight, we'll be up because we'll be at church anyway. We'll be ready to go. Maybe. You could. This is this is the issues for those of you listening. When you grow up in the Greek community <laughs> and it's heavily <laughs> hey, like, or uh, <laughs> it? and, and it's, it's a bastard. And, and <laughs> like you kind of live in that world where you do go to church for like a full week in Easter, and it's a big deal, and everyone yeah. like it's kind of like our New Year. So if you're well, listening Tino to says me, like it's the Super Bowl of the Greek community, it's sure, Fashion Week. <laughs> it's also fuck, man. Is it Fashion Week? Holy shit! Changing those robes yeah. for the altar, go with purple to white. But yeah. for people that are listening, and you're like, oh, these guys are church goers and stuff. It's different when you're part of like an actual community and it's part of your culture and stuff yeah. and like you know it's a big deal like super bowl it's the new year's it's all sorts of things yeah. uh it's the fashion week it's all all that stuff and it's in the way of our end game viewing so if there's a, a midnight one we're fucking going Vasily, if there's midnight are you in because yes. i'll buy the ticket this time you'll be in yeah it'll be like that time if there's a if there's a midnight one i say we go that'd be awesome to go yeah. take some pre-workout right before take the day take take the next day off work because it's our good friday that's a good point well for me, that's a good point. Is, yeah, is Canada or sorry, is Canadian Easter and Greek Easter nineteenth and twenty sixth? No. Oh shit! It's a different week. Oh shit! That's fine. I'll go to school dead. I'll go to school dead. <laughs> hey man, I've done it before. Actually, the the worst thing, the best slash worst thing I ever did. I went to a how or yeah, it was an ugly sweater party, mm. and it went on. I work at. I had to be at the in the kitchen by six o'clock. This is when I was living in Calgary. Oh, okay. And the party, I went to this party, and I ended up being there till four thirty in the morning, and I had to work at six. <laughs> So, so I you went, didn't sleep. No, I went straight to the casino, played cards until like 5.30. I played cards for about an hour or so. Uh, I think I lost 60 bucks and I went to work in my ugly sweater. Just like, and it was one of those things where I'm like, I, I had to get a cab home because I was walking out of the restaurant and just like dragging. Delirious. And yeah. the restaurant, you've been there. It's yeah. on a little island. So you actually have to <laughs> walk 10 minutes to yeah. get out. And I'm like, I walked out the door and I'm like. Uh, still one of the nicest places like it's the nicest place. restaurant so, yeah. yeah it's a great place yeah um what else we got i don't know i thought i had something else about five minutes to kill <laughs> well at least on the live show for sure yeah um I, I swear to god i had something else but i don't remember what it was unless there's something else randomly you guys i was gonna to say about. for endgame i don't think it'd be a problem with me like i feel like i really tired like as of lately like, my energy just like drains like, i need a lot of naps yeah, but for I remember for Infinity War, we went to the late one too, and I was up for Infinity War. Other movies I've been tired for. I remember Aquaman, I was tired for. Uh, Into the Spider Verse, I got tired for. But Endgame is a big one. Where I'd be Sorry. excited to see it. Watching it, you got tired. Hello. Yeah, so like, I was just yeah. We went to the late show for Spider Verse, and it was kind of one of those things I just like was, wanted to see, but wasn't really excited to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For Endgame, like I'd be hyped for the like the full week waiting to see that movie. So I feel like it wouldn't be a problem for me to be up. Well, again, this is the biggest season finale of anything like yeah. this is fucking a 10-year show right uh actually i'm gonna get off marvel dc Zack snyder had some comments about uh batman killing people and he says well this is the world that he lives in and this is like some people are offended or hurt by I it like or what whatever he said. he's like yeah some people come up to him like oh my hero won't do this he's like fuck off it's my hero <laughs> You know what though? There's two sides to every to everything. And on the one hand, yeah, he's the one making the movie. Yep. On the other hand, we direct your own movie. <laughs> direct your own movie. And I know, like, I mean, I was getting butthurt over the Captain Marvel stuff, and it's like I hated yes. everything about what that movie stood for. Yeah. Actually, more than I didn't dislike the movie. Like, the more I think about it, I just think it's I, I just dislike the movie. Yeah. I hate everything else in the background, though. Everything, all the things that I was hearing, whether true or false, whatever it is, hate all of it. But at the same time, I didn't make the movie. Yeah. And in Zack Snyder's case, he's like, I made this is the Batman that I have. And honestly, it didn't really bother me that he was icing people. Who cares? Mm -hmm. Did it bother you when Superman did in Man of Steel? When he killed Zod? I thought that was great. Interpretation of the character. Like, get off your high horse, man. That's what makes a character interesting. Like, Dark but he also Knight. had the the struggle of doing it right. Like he didn't want to. It's not like he did it maliciously and, and was that's like, what I hate. "That's <laughs> what." That's when the character learned. <laughs> yeah. Th- like, if you want to see where does a character get his morals from? Yeah. It's it right there. Most yeah. people get the biggest morals in their lives by doing the things they don't want to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm not saying that somebody has to go out and kill somebody to really realize not to kill anybody. But in Superman's case, with that much power to save these people. 
the only way he was able to make it happen was what he did. That was yeah. a, that was the only thing that he can do to stop it. And I think it's that's why I personally like it. I thought the I, I just think the father Ken stuff was. I love stupid. everybody. Uh, somebody said, "Well, why didn't you just cover his like his eyes?" <laughs> well, he did try though. He did try to do it. No, but the thing is, if he covers his eyes and he's doing the blaster, wouldn't it go through? Like they have yeah. the same power abilities. You know what but, I mean? And the thing I hated was they like they said, "Oh, well, he liked killing." The guy was like crying for a solid minute. Yeah, <laughs> scream no. Yeah. That scream after was like powerful yeah. that's like so like know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like yeah. he was yeah all hyped about it he wasn't dancing around and shit yeah. up like zach Ryder and mojo like the hype bros yeah <laughs> i don't know i, I mean I, 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 I get i get the thing with see the ironic thing about batman is this when the, the one thing that we always seem to forget you know how many people die every year by slipping in a bathtub <laughs> yeah okay batman punches fools in the fucking head <laughs> real hard into concrete okay yeah. with armor on do you know how many people i know two people that have had brain aneurysms by hitting their like head in their vehicles yeah okay he's hitting them real hard yeah these guys are getting wrecked i and mean they're not dead they're fucking crippled for they life. are okay. done son yeah. so i'm sorry i love batman He's he's one of my favorites, obviously. Yeah. But I know he's not for a so fact. Nice. <laughs> well, I know for a fact that you know if someone trips the wrong way, they can crack their head and die. Yeah, like yeah. we live in a very dangerous, dangerous world. Yeah, and so come on. Yeah. Also, in Nolan's come films, on. like yeah, he definitely killed people. Those <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, he drops someone from a roof. Don't act like oh, he's so merciful. He dropped someone from a fucking roof. He <laughs> broke it. Like that could have been easy death. He sh- should have. Uh, yeah, he did drop them. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, in the first movie. Mm-hmm. He should have almost died. Whiplash. Mm-hmm. You know when people get whiplash from a car accident from a fender bender? Yeah. Come on, man. Come you on. dropped it. He would, I'm surprised his ankle didn't, like, fall off. <laughs> well, he fucking broke his legs, but, I mean, like, be thankful. Like, that was best case scenario. Oh, that was yeah. Eric Roberts. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm even talking about the first one where he brings up the guy and he's like, <laughs> where are the drugs? <laughs> <coughs> was that what he said? Yes, he yeah. coughed all over his face. Where are the other drugs at? And then he drops them. Like the guy fell all the way. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Even him himself. But I mean, that's where I'm like, you know what? He's not actively, you know, shooting it. And I get it. But let's be honest here. Also, Zack Snyder confirmed the Snyder cut is real. He has it at his house. He's probably sitting there watching it being like, those fools have no idea. I would be, if I knew him, I would ask him. If I knew him as a friend, I'd say, show me the phone. But he can't release it. People are saying, oh, why does he just leak it online? It's because he's the only one with a copy. They yeah. obviously know who fucking leaked it yeah. online. Like, <laughs> well, who did this, Scooby-Doo? Yeah. Well, he could stage a robbery at his home. Someone takes uh, it. Actually, I'm so, he said himself, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if a DC fan fucking broke into his house and stole it. Yeah. Please. The, sorry, what what are you talking like? A what is the, the Justice League? Oh, no, the, Justice League. Oh, oh Justice League. Three oh, okay. hours of his own movie that pe- that people claim are like. Yeah. Well, I think it'd be better than because I just didn't like Justice League. Yeah. I don't know if it would be better. It could be fucking awful. Who knows? But <laughs> it'd be his vision at least. It'd be his movie. So at least we'd know for sure the movie was shit or not. Yes, we are. Shazam looks awesome. Yeah. Somebody mm-hmm. said they didn't like how Shazam looked. Like, what are you smoking? No. Also, panel today said Wonder Woman. He hasn't seen Captain Marvel, but he thinks that Wonder Woman. Would be worse than Captain Marvel. I'm like, what are you smoking? He thinks it'll be worse, but he hasn't seen it yet. Let yeah, him see I said it Wonder Woman was a good movie. He's like, oh, it was kind of boring. I'm like, yeah, but like, it was like it was slow, slow some parts, but overall, it was a good film. Like, it was I, surprising. I, I thought it was wonderful. And the theme, yeah. the theme itself. Well, I get yeah. Her her theme song plays a lot into it. I love. Um, Did you see that? Hear that? Sorry to cut you off. No, that no. statistic about. Uh, the number, of, it, yeah. the number of females. Was that you that did that? Yeah. Oh, we're oh, done. I guess we lost uh, our Goodbye, female. Goodbye, everyone. Fuck. <laughs> it didn't even give us the timer. Um, yeah, that was the one that he posted. That was the one that he Do you think posted. that's... Okay. You, is so, that legit? I think so. I never okay. back out yet. Okay. Say, yeah. say, say, <laughs> the, say the fact, and uh, I want to talk about that because you told me I had no idea, and that's really interesting. While you're looking that up, I'll quickly mention... Um, mention so it. Gronk retired from the New England Patriots. Oh, shit. Um, a, a champ. Yeah, a champ, like with whatever, what, times, five Super times, Bowls. Really, I don't yeah. know how many won, but a ton. For sure, Hall of Famer. <laughs> There's talk he's going to be going into the WWE. And he made an appearance in one of the WrestleManias. With Mojo. Yeah, with Mojo. So I don't know. Royal. What are your, Do you think he'll actually go into the WWE? I believe it's Battle Royale. Battle Royale. Not the Battle Royal. It's Battle Royal. It's Battle Royal. Is it actually Battle Royal? It is Battle Royal. Why wouldn't they call it yeah. Royale? Royale is so much better. Yeah. Like a Royale with cheese. They actually, they might have. The Royal Rumble, they call it. 
it's but uh, even back in the day, I think it was a battle royal. Oh, not battle let's royale. Get, get ready, ready to run. battle royal. <laughs> Come on. I think. Well, yeah. What else is he gonna do? Like yeah. dance. Well. Dance. He could dance. Oh wait, wasn't he already on Dancing with the Stars? Mm. Mm. <laughs> do we watch it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't watch it. Is this is how much your mother packs yeah. or Dancing with the Star packs. I don't know what facts we're on. <laughs> so, Wonder Woman's audience was 56% female, 44% male. Okay. Captain Marvel's was 39% female, 61% male. Mm. And this movie wasn't for males. Yeah. 61%. Well, okay. I already said my thing last time. Does that make more sense to what I was talking about in regards to this movie? Like, what did you say? You said a lot oh, of this movie. The stuff, the stuff where, Ka- uh, where Brie Larson, as a spokesperson for Captain Marvel, isolated or alienated mm-hmm. a, a big group of people. But even though there was a high majority of men that went to it, right? Um, I think the, I think a lot of what Captain Marvel's, Marvel's success was, um, was simply based on strategy alone. That's it. Mm-hmm. Again, watching the movie, there were very few moments where I actually felt like I'm enjoying myself. I was pretty bored. I didn't even, like I said, I didn't even stay for the end credits scenes. I'm like, I'm the fuck out of here. This is boring yeah. as shit. I rewatched Iron Man 2. I feel the same way, but at least I know Tony Stark's character and I can enjoy watching Tony Stark's character. Mm-hmm. This one is kind of like Iron Man 2 without anything there to draw me in. You know? Um, and I, I think it also speaks to the fact that as much as Marvel has been trying to make Captain America or Captain Marvel a thing in the comics, no one's attached to her. Yeah. Like no, like it hasn't been working for them. At least that's what, uh, that's what majority of people are saying. They've rebranded her a bunch of times in the comics and now they're trying to make a run with the movies and stuff. And it's just not a character. People are gravitating. Well, here's the thing with Wonder Woman. Why would people care about Captain Marvel? Captain Marvel is just a shittier Wonder Woman. And like yeah. Marvel and DC, mm-hmm. the reason why like the movies do so well for Marvel is because there's no DC movie that's really rivaling the Marvel movies. Mm-hmm. Like Justice League, the movie was just a shitty Avengers. That's why it didn't do very well. Yep. Wonder Woman mm-hmm. was just a better Captain Marvel. That's why it dominated and has such like critical mm-hmm. success. I-, I think Wonder Woman was Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel was a terrible, terrible Wonder Woman knockoff or attempt to knock it off. Stupid question. Was Captain Marvel always female? Yeah. yeah. No. No, right? It was Marvel. So they okay. ch- in the movie they changed Marvel to the Doctor that was there. Okay, which you know what? A lot of people were upset about. I really don't give a shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I don't care. Um, because then the argument is, well, what about Tilda Swinton in uh, Doctor Strange, playing what should have been a, a an older Japanese character? That's what yeah. the Asian one was, and we're taught we're we're dealing with a Celtic bald woman kind of thing. Yeah. So. They do that all the time in the films. Is it cool? No, but whatever they did it. So that's not yeah. my argument. But yeah, it was Marvel first. Because I, and the only reason I say that is because I saw like um, online they were talking, they were showing uh, pictures of like the first comic of Captain Marvel, mm-hmm. and it was a dude with long hair. Oh, yeah. But it was like it was a dude, so that's why I was like, okay, did I? Fact, was there he, something I'm missing? Or yeah. Marvel defeated <laughs> Thanos. First, if I remember correctly, okay. in the comic run, and only because it's someone else was explaining it to me, like I was watching a YouTube video kind of explaining it. Because before the movie, I tried to pick up as much Captain Marvel information as I possibly could. Yeah. The only thing I knew was the symbol and that she's OP. Like I knew as a character, they made her in the thing to be like super fucking powerful, right? Mm-hmm. And so, but then I realized I'm like, oh, they really failed to make the female part of her. Every, they, it's like the fan base has accepted every other female character except her. Yeah. Even fucking She Hulk, I think. Which like, I think that would be an awesome movie. with with uh, with Captain Marvel. I think there was just no like the character had no substance. Like it was, it wasn't like she wasn't sarcastic and witty. She tried to be like in some cases, but there was no personality. There was nothing about her that that made you go. Okay, I like, like, you know, like with Thor, he made these little quips and comments. And yeah, he was arrogant at times. But, but that's like, what it was. It was his but arrogance, it was, and, yeah, but his charm. He was charming. charming, yeah. right? She didn't have that. Like, so, yeah. and when you, when she tries to be serious, she comes across as douchey. Yeah. I think is the consensus. Hot, holier than thou. Yeah, yeah. When she tries to be funny, it's just like thrown out there and it just looks awful. It's forced. Yeah, yeah it's forced. Thank yeah. you. But they, I don't know. I think that they, they just, and I don't know, maybe that's how they purposely did it. And I'm waiting to see how they tie it all together with, with Endgame. But yeah, but I just. Why do you think, though, that there were 
much less females that went to go see it and way more males. The males I can attribute to, there hasn't been a Marvel movie in a while. Mm-hmm. And Endgame is six weeks away, which is why they place it there. But if if that statistic is legit true on International Women's Day, why wasn't the floodgates open with females? Easy, because Wonder Woman is an iconic exactly. one, and she's not. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I 100% agree. Yeah. No one knows. Nobody no knows cares. who Captain Marvel was. Yep. Yeah. I always thought Captain Marvel was a guy, and... To an extent, I was right because originally, well, again, Marvel, yeah, yeah, Marvel, yeah. Marvel is Shazam as well. So that's the other one because oh. Ethan was like, "So uh, wait a minute, I thought Shazam was Captain Marvel." Well, he was. What's the deal with that? Do they share? it? Did one give up the well, other? No, Captain like, Marvel, Shazam was first. Yeah, and then they kind of just stole a name. And oh, like, okay. fuck. Okay, so we changed to Shazam. <laughs> yeah, and that's why they made it Marvel, M A R dash V E L L in okay. the comics, and then they transferred it over and kind of stole it. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I don't know. Cool. I um. Yeah, I don't know. The more the more I think about it, the more I just again, I never have to see it ever again. Yeah. I never want to see it ever again. And for the stuff that really really bothered me as a fan of the entire canon in an era where everyone's pissed off that I don't know, Luke Skywalker made himself a force ghost in the fucking on another <laughs> planet and died and all of this other stuff like people are raging over stuff like that, which it didn't bother me that much. No. But I know it bothered well, the, the fan shitty, base. So there's a lot of things we bothered with that movie, and that wasn't one of them. <laughs> I'll tell you this. For me personally, you take out that whole entire casino thing with Finn and Rose. Yeah. You have yourself a tighter movie, a better movie. Agreed. And if you take out that stuff with Laura Dern, the completely irrational that you would hide all the information away from him from the person treat him like a little child so he can do a mutiny that no one really responds to only to have princess leia come back and be like we have a plan why didn't you fucking tell me i'm gonna say this i was holding in a major piss during that final like sequence yeah and that was the only time i've seen a movie was like i should have taken that fucking piss <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, I don't know. Anyways, based on that stat, I'm not surprised. I think, like again, Wonder Woman is a gr- uh, was a great. I loved it, mm-hmm. and I loved it for the reason that those slow moments to me had so much substance because she's. Well, you got to see why she was OP. You got to see like why she became a god with Captain Marvel. It's really like if you watch Dragon Ball yeah. and you just went to him turning Super Saiyan, he's just being the shit out of everybody. Yeah. Well, and and the thing with what people mistake and mistake with Dragon Ball Z is. Uh, like Goku was a person that loved fighting for the art of fighting. Mm-hmm. It wasn't to beat people up. And so for him to get to those moments, he had to, he had to work on his technique as much as possible. It was, it was like sport, right? Like you just want to, you, you want to be good at something. Then when he goes super saying that payoff is one of the best mm-hmm. payoffs ever, mm-hmm. but he earned that. Wonder Woman was getting her ass beat in training. Since she was young. And we saw that. Next thing you know, she discovers this being called man. And that there's a world outside of her own bubble. And those slow moments that she's going, she's seeing how people act because she's never seen this before. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, I even mentioned it before. Jason fucking Bourne, man. Like, that's that's one you can compare. Because they're both characters with that don't know their past. And... With Jason Bourne, you're following him. He's emotional. He's trying to deal with things. You're you're kind of going with him. And the, when those cops show up in that park bench and he does his moves, you're like, whoa, wait a minute. What's going on here? Right. Yeah. Whereas this one, it's like, OK, she can beat everybody. No problem. And she has this inhibitor and they're they're force telling us that they're force telling her that, oh, you know, you got to control your temper and stuff, which is essentially the movie saying that the patriarchy is holding you down and calling you emotional. Mm-hmm. That's all I got from it. Right. I didn't get that from Wonder Woman. Yeah. But I have talked to other people that, that that did like that, like Captain Marvel, and they did feel empowered and stuff. And I'm like, you know what? At this point, all the power to Good you. Like <laughs> well, I'm just like, all yeah. the power to you. That's it. Yeah. Um, What else we got? I swear to God, I had one more thing. But we talked about the Zack Snyder thing. I think that was it. Okay, let's wrap this up. Let's whap it. Let's whap, whap it. it. Um, All right. That's it. This was our... Uh, I'm Nick. This is our <laughs> and your boy, big F's. Whoa, oh, I haven't done that. <laughs> I know. Thank you to everybody <laughs> listening right now. Um, we did it on purpose. Yeah, yeah. Did it all for the nookie. Yeah. The um, nookie. yeah. Thanks everybody for joining us. Make sure you're following Entertain Facts on Instagram and make sure you're following the F Word podcast on Instagram as well. At excuse me. And now finally back after like a six month hiatus or whatever. We're releasing the episodes on YouTube, so if you're sitting around and having YouTube in the background or whatever, you can listen to us 
there. I'm G. It's been your boy, Biggity F's. <laughs> and Nick. <laughs> Nicholas, Nicholas, Ridiculous. And we're out. <laughs> Thank you.